Hello, everyone. Welcome to the SpinCast Cycling Show. I'm your host, Brian Kelson, Lisa Vries, Brian White, and our now fourth host, Casey Shum. Oh, the music's so good. I'm I'm rocking out to it. It's like I caught I the ferry. Very... I caught the ferry on time oh. to get back to the uh, to the mainland. Did you get back to the mainland? Lee's... Lee caught his I... ferry to make the show tonight. I was on the mainland and I came back he left, the island. Island. left the mainland. Okay. And I almost couldn't because there was 400 kids camp kids clogging up the ferry system. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess because of the ferries safety, they're only allowed a certain amount of passengers and vehicles. And they were very close to reaching their passenger safety capacity. Oh. So I was like on the verge of maybe having to wait for another two and a half hours. Oh, because it's a weekend. So the ferry runs. It's very busy. Yeah, because it is. Yes, it's Sunday afternoon. Okay. But it is super busy. Well, you made it. And now we have a show. And so uh, come of the, some of the topics on the table are, well, we want to touch on, I do want to touch on the racing score thing because I'm still confused. Yeah. I'm glad we have our expert, two experts here. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, what is it? The Zwift cosmetics. I'm a big fan of the new roads, the new <laughs> cosmetic surface road. And then let's get into this one. Let's go right into it. My whoosh, my whoosh. Uh, so the qualifier, there was a, I got an email that there's a qualifier. I'm not used to the, Hey, join a my whoosh event. That isn't the Sunday race club where you have to sign up mm -hmm. like three days before. Yeah. So this qualifier thing has been throwing me off. It was like, Hey, I'd get an email and it'd be like, I can join this today and do it. I didn't do it, but is that correct? Brian? Yeah. If, if you, you have to do the power passport test, you have to have that done and then you can do it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the open qualifiers. The only thing you had to do is the, the power passport test. So you had to have dual recording. You had to have, you know, a verified certified trainer. you can join it and you can join yep. up until what time is the cutoff to get into the thing. Well, I got I, I was going to do it today, but I just said, hell with it. I'm not going to stand a chance anyway. I might be able to sneak through because there's been 20 other people qualify, you know, mm -hmm. last Saturday and Wednesday. But I said, you know, I'm going to get smoked anyway and whatever. So uh, Friday night or Friday at some point, they email the start list. And then Saturday morning, they updated it and say, hey, we had several people complete the prior passport test. They've been added. Okay. And there was probably 20 people that they added Saturday morning. Well, my Saturday morning, who knows when it was. So is it still you sign up and then they give you the invite? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you so have it's to not register. like you can just join in like a, like a casual race on Zwift. Or no. Something. no. And, okay, and now okay. they also so have some Sun turnaround time. Sunday race club. And, and I got a little clarification because I did the power passport test, sent it in and they say you have to email race control saying, hey, I did this. So yeah. I thought they were going to come back and say, hey, everything looks good. Nothing. And it's basically you submit the data, you sign up, and that's it. You know what I mean? Like as long as you complete it, you know, the power passport test and get all the stuff they want. So no news is in. good news from them? Yeah. Yeah, basically. So um, uh, you, I know I'm getting into the weeds here. You sign, you do the power passport test. Let's say you've had that for whatever. Yeah. You just sign up and then they'll send, they'll kick you an email to it. Like I send yep. it a race club, but the turnaround time is, uh, quicker. Yeah. Or is so, it the same turnaround time, but you don't, you don't have to be, cause I remember Sunday race club stuff that I did. Uh, it was like, if you didn't sign up by like Wednesday, like if correct. they opened it on Tuesday, you didn't sign up by Wednesday, they would close registration. It's a, for Sunday race club. I believe it's Thursday afternoon for me in the, in the Eastern yeah. United States. So yeah, there is that time. And it's so they can sort you out from your power passport test of what category you're in. Uh, because they do change it from week to week. Because I've seen guys in, in Cat 3 one week mm -hmm. and then Cat 4 the next week. And then they're back to Cat 3. So it's like course dependent. Okay. Um, and and that they also have now no prize money. But Wednesday and Saturday, it's called My Woosh Classics. It's all verified racing. It's Sunday Race Club style. But it's no money. It's Wednesday. To get more people there, so to get more people into the verified racing, 
That's that's yes, that's okay. my understanding. So it's just and I don't know the times, and it, it or so if my whoosh ever gets wind of this, please pick a time zone and stick with it. They use yeah. Central European time. They use Gulf Standard time. They use GMT. I, okay, so as an American, I got Eastern time, Central time, Mountain, and Pacific, and that's hard enough to keep track of. And then you keep throwing and changing oh, what it is. The times. No, they're moving the time zone. So, like, if 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 like they're using, like, they'll literally say, you know, GMT plus four for one event, and then I'll get an email and say Gulf Standard Time, okay, and then, and then I'll get a another go to do another event, and it says we're using Central. So it's still European the same time. time. They're just in their in their communication. It's a new yeah. time zone that you're having it's to figure out. It's all the time out. zone, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. I have That's no wrong. idea. So yeah, like. Yeah. I have a bookmark <laughs> time zone calculator thing for <laughs> Eastern time to whatever they throw out. That's, that's all about the fight club, right? If they yeah. keep, if they keep oh changing God, the yeah. time zone, less people yeah. can find it. Yeah, Brian and it. I had an inside joke with RGT <laughs> about time zones because they did almost the same thing. Yeah, they would do it too. UTC, yeah. GMT. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, what time are we racing? I don't know because yeah. everything was based off of UTC, which we found out apparently is the same as GMT. Yeah. Well, they, they GMT like, went away in the 70s. They were supposed to adopt UTC, but whatever. Yeah. And I love time zone talk, but it was a Fondo <laughs> thing where they had multi. So this is the difference between if those people that don't know, like RGT and the events that used to happen that were fun on RGT, which was the the, the Grand Fondo series. Remember we used to do that, Lee? I think you did it, I Casey, the, too. I, it was the time segments. Yeah. I don't know if Brian did them, too. I think Brian might did. I think we As all a did. Canadian, them. I. Qualified oh, you qualified for the U.S. For the national, US championships. national championships. Yeah, you, you qualified for the U.S. national uh, Fondo championship. I registered, yeah, and I never registered. went. Uh, I was the, able to register. Yeah, the cool thing was, it, the, well, the bad thing and the and the good thing is, is it had multiple time zones. So it was like four. It was like three or four a day. Uh, uh, one day it was a Sunday, and it would have groups. And so, like the European, which was like a six o'clock in the morning, it was like six or seven Pacific for us had the most amount of people because it had all the Europeans. So the speeds were so much faster. So you always wanted to do those races because you would get the bigger group with the bigger draft to do the segments. But the difference between that and my whoosh is my whoosh like Sunday race club is one ra one time. It is one time. They don't do anything else. It's the, when you're getting different time zones, you're having to calculate what time it is. That's where you're like, you have to be dedicated for like a, like a West coast United States and North America. I have to commit to waking up at 2 a.m. to be mentally ready to go to race at 3 a.m., which is very yeah. difficult. So that's where I think hopefully the future for my whoosh is they have more of these for different skill sets or different, you know, like, hey, this is for people that are can wake up or maybe a little bit later or than the Sunday race club and race. And the people that are racing in like the main race club could do that, like having events for multiple time zones would be great because we're so yeah, used so to the we're you we're so used to the hey at, like every hour on the hour a race now we'll get into that a little bit later with the race scoring thing but yeah casey what were you gonna say well as i was gonna say are, are these other verified rides that they're putting on did they are they at the same yeah. time of day as race club or did they move them because that's that's my biggest complaint right now is i'm not messing with the power passport stuff because I want to like the platform a little more before I commit that much time. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if I can find something on a Wednesday evening or even a Wednesday lunchtime, I might be worth doing the passport to get into it a little bit, but I'm yeah. not, I'm not doing the passport to get up at 3 a.m. on a Sunday to race. It, Sorry. It looks like it says, uh, what it EMEA. So what is that? Eastern middle. EMEA. The EMEA is I don't even know whatever it is. And then yeah. America. So there's two times. Now, of course, I got to calculate the damn thing because we're. EMEA is, is Europe, Middle East, and Asia. Okay. So it's at 2300, is what UTC? 2300 CET is the race, which is 5 p.m. Eastern time. So okay. that's. That's the America's version. That's Wednesday. Now, Saturday is, I think it was 1900. Is 1 p.m. Saturday is 1 p.m. 
for the Americas. And then the that's other one's bad. Good. That's good. No, that's yeah. not bad. And and those, are, those, are, those are, you need power passport, but there's no prize yeah. money. Right. Because it'd be so well, yeah, less Eastern. hoops, less. The thing about the prize money is they have, they need you to like, hey, I'm going to sign up and race this. They know who you are. They really know who you are. And then the rate, then they give you an invite. Then you join the race. Yeah. You do the race, all the other stuff. Where these are kind of like the world qualifiers is it's allowing people to uh, have a little bit more uh, leeway in their scheduling. Because I was I always think about the Sunday Race Club and I'm like, oh, I didn't sign up in time, so I can't do it. But yeah. there's times where I'm like, hey, if I could get in on the day of, like, hey, my actually I you know I, I rode last night I maybe I would get up early and do it. You can't do that because you have to you have to commit to it, which is like real outdoor signing yeah. up for a race. You yeah. most most pre reg, you can usually sign up on the day. Like you go to the event, you can do a sign like a one day license and do the event. But the majority of people now, they they pre sign up uh, like on a Wednesday for a Sunday race or a weekend race, which is. Kind of gets people in the in the the hey I'm going to commit to this race like I'm going to prepare mentally hey I got to get ready I got to wake up I got to get on the bike blah 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 we've gotten to that casual like oh I'm just going to sign up to a it's a recovery race you know that that leads me into the leads me into the already we ha we want to have one more thing with my whoosh and then we'll lead me it'll lead us. Well, into I was just the, curious in with the my whoosh the open qualifiers. So the open qualifiers don't count against the country's allocation. They're, they're like additional, yeah. they're additional okay. spots. So yeah. That, so that's super yeah. interesting because like, you know, Canada was allowed seven men and five women. Well, maybe you were on the outskirts and you could get in. And then yeah. now Canada has eight people raising yeah. for Canada. If you're Canada, do you send your seven guys into the open qualifiers and if one of them makes it you can go deeper into your roster right exactly like, <laughs> like strategy end up, with, end up with 15 it's a great right. strategy in the yeah, Canada, Canada would seem like a country that would do that because uh so josh sneaky. yeah because well no but because they're <laughs> sort of like their esports coordinator is on top of things because i remember uh i don't know who i was talking to i uh it was Dean Cunningham who uh, races for Restart, but he's also big. Uh, he's in Scotland. So in the World Championships, there's no Scotland team. It's Team GB. It's Great Britain has a team, which is Scotland, England, Wales as well. And I think, I think that's it, right? So he can't, he's, he's, he communicated uh, or he tried to communicate with uh, the Great British team. And it was like, he kind of not into it. Where Canada seems like they got a discord, they're doing all these things like, hey, let's all, let's get the Tom Thralls, let's get in here, let's lock up the open qualifiers. And then we can we can select who we want to select and say, hey, these are some young people. I think the work, well, I think the workaround for that is, I think the countries had to... Pre-select already. Pre-select, because open qualifiers were after oh the big ah uh, right yeah they had, okay. to, they had to declare their seven before okay okay awesome. yeah because they, they probably works. thought of that because i was like because that would be yeah. a good idea you could get 17 people into the flipping okay so let me ask you this can you compete in it but not get a spot so like if tom thrall who's already selected can he race in the race affect the race for mm -hmm. team canada but he's like, I'm not going to win. So like he might win it and then it cascades pull, down. But yeah. Pull for it or attack or do support. things, mix it up. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's oh, that's interesting. All, see, that's you, the thing is if you people get, really like, want a Canadian to... national champ to domestique for yeah. someone to make it in the open qualifiers by pulling them. Oh, that seems so, so awesome. So me, more news. Just to totally mess things up. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it would be. You wonder if, if any of them are thinking about it, if they'll shut it down. Uh, did I read this week that the UCI said that they are going to test every single trainer used yeah. in yes. the UCI it, oh, we in got the this, finals? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I got an article too. Did you get the article? What I read yeah. was the UCI was testing so many trainers from Elite to get a batch of 40 of them oh, that were okay. all within like point 
one percent of each other yeah friend of the show scott cunningham a national champion united states national champion esports uh he's in chat he's in chat he sent me an article and i don't have it up right now but it was a cycling weekly i think you sent it to lee or whoever sent it but that's the thing he's like hey you guys should talk about this this week and that's the you bring up a good thing here uh let's 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 uh let's stay on the my whoosh thing uh just a little bit longer uh to do this trainer talk and then we do want to have there's there was an announcement that it's more of like a world thing but can you get up i know you have the video do you want to play the my whoosh video or do you want yeah, to go on the trainer this. let's play the my whoosh video we'll talk about that and then we'll spend some time on the trainer stuff so my whoosh is this, this is a new world this is a new world yep. coming up uh no next next update uh your yeah, 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 yeah. no it has to be All muted right. because oh, yeah because he's uh, playing a super offensive sound yeah it's just <laughs> a, a demon of, that's that yeah, dragon a, he's coming wow, after our soul. sounds like lumo stream oh wait i'm sorry <laughs> so yeah. this next update is supposed to in fix, a whole new world soon okay it's supposed to fix the power delay the game developer rodney i don't know how his last name he's i i made the comment i said we don't know the physics we have no idea it's the power delay and he replied straight to me and said i'm curious to see what you'll think after this next well, update pause pause the video so, right no no keep going so it's like new york right there <laughs> do they got dragons yeah i've i've seen other comments along those lines too brian um yeah. where people post about the pack dynamics and they're coming back and saying something like like we're working on it maybe in the next update okay. right which There's is perfect up barney's ears in chat like wait a month yeah. before uh, yeah. worlds we're gonna get new dynamics I, and, and that's yeah. and that's uh, so that's my issue okay mm -hmm. we we as the people racing and learning it we know what it is don't do anything to after worlds keep no, the dynamics no, all the same no i'm i'm for doing i'm for, i'm for totally oh, getting it dialed in. we don't want another rgt steering fiasco no no, no it's not gonna be that it'll be that but i don't i don't want it <laughs> right. I, I, I think i think I, here's the I thing i would have won nationals if i could steer probably yeah probably well, <laughs> well steering got was a debate today in my race place. too no, I, I but, think, look, I think my wish should get it dialed in and until party. the day before, like, forget it, just get it dialed in. Like, don't like, wait, you, everyone well, was complaining about like, oh, it needs to be fixed. It needs to be, if you can fix it the day before, fix it the day before and it breaks it fine. But I'm for like, ah, Hey, just man. get it fixed. Come I, on. It, what are you talking about? We, yeah, we I, I'm it. with you. I'm with you. I, I just like if you're learning the game and then it changes. But but here's the other thing: like you guys are right. If they make this update now and say you've done you qualify for the worlds, you don't get back to my whoosh and things have changed the, the dynamics. That's their problem for not writing the program or yeah. moving it. I think so there's two I, keys I to it. it. I think there's two keys to it. Look, what what Lee just said: it it, it can't be an RGT steering. Thing, oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. You yeah. cannot flip the dynamics on its head a week beforehand completely have to relearn the game or completely break it which i think zwift has done in the past yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. but like barney said in chat i do agree with it they need to limit it to just fix the delay don't mess with the drag don't mess with all the cda don't try to overhaul the world fix the delay and yeah, i think I it'll think automatically feel right or feel better right yeah. but don't don't try to do too much no, no, no. I'm not saying do too much, but I'm not saying don't stop innovation for the event. I think it yeah. should be because this is so coming down to the wire that like it, they need as much time as they possibly can. I, yes. It's going to suck if it's, if it becomes this sort of RGT steering thing, I totally get that. But the elites didn't have the steering issue. I mean, they did, but they, we told everyone don't turn on your companion app. And no yeah, because it was discovered it. during. It was discovered that if you that. actually had the RGT right. companion app, it would have affected you. And they worked and it, it out. Yeah, they, they worked it out. It out. But yeah. the hey, the delay or hey, we make it better. I think that that's sort of this will go. The, the new world thing is cool, uh, which we can talk about a little bit. But and the, you got to think about this: is uh, we've got 
since last August, I think it's been Belgium, Australia. California, Austria was in there too. And the, now that's World of Warcraft. Hydrant and then another one. Oh, Hydrant. Yeah, World of Hy- Warcraft <laughs> in a year. It's like, so it was and, like Avatar and World, World of Warcraft. Yeah. So you got to think about like that development in the game. Yeah, there's the draft issues, there's workout issues. Yes, all that. But this is pretty incredible. And like that's why we give Zwift shit for 19 kilometers over four years. I I don't think there's a problem. I mean, I've done two my whoosh races now on on back to back Fridays in a league race, and I I have no problem with the pack. Perfectly fine. Yeah. I broke away to a one minute win both times. I stayed in the pack for a whole mile. (laughs) <laughs> I can't right. find a race that they'll keep together yeah. in a pack to actually test it, but uh, it, the game's good. The, ga- the game is good. Yeah, and that's a, it, we, it's like the complete opposite complaint is yeah. my whoosh is kicking out constant new content, new roads, new worlds, all these other things, and their physics are, they need to be better. Like the, 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 the mm-hmm. low-hanging fruit, in my opinion, which is like everyone else thinks that the low-hanging fruit is more content and all the other stuff, where Zwift has the grade in whatever the last six months they, uh, Scotland it, was the last well, one was in Scotland or no, no, it was the, it's the, uh, whatever the crab shack road. They added that too. That was last uh, fall. The crab shack. Well, that's yeah, all I remember ocean, is, is they spent so much time yeah. on that crab shack neon sign. Uh, the it's, Hey, spend, stop making worlds <laughs> or you guys have the funding to do worlds or make new worlds and new routes and fix the delay issue or the, the sort of yo-yoing, if that's even getting better, right? That's what we want. That's what I want on Zwift, where everyone's like, oh, I don't really care about that stuff. Like, I actually think there's better momentum in Zwift. I've been finishing rides in Zwift, and the momentum is, like, keeping me flowing even more on, like, a 0%. Well, I'm I like, think they got rid of that, because originally Zwift auto break because Zwift was for fitness training and people didn't want to be able to coast. And now they've, with the pack oh. dynamics, they've done the coasting thing. It's still not awesome, but it's way better than it was oh, yeah, yeah. before. When you would stop pedaling, you would come to a stop pretty darn fast. Yeah, or you would be doing a minus 3% grade and you would stop. Yeah. Based You're on like, how am I stopping? Yeah, yeah. It would, it would have this weird auto break thing. So I think that that's a positive, in my opinion. Like, oh, they have the momentum that whatever the, uh, you can change. Cause I was having, I was double dipping. We'll get into double dipping. The uh, hitting the pairing screen and you're still moving, which was nice. Uh, but I'm excited for the new, like keep making new content. That's great. But keep also focusing on well, fixing the. I think what the problem, the, uh, it's not a problem. The, uh, whatever but- physics. It's just with the game engine that my Woosh uses is a game engine that everyone uses. So I think making new content is super easy for them. Mm-hmm. So they're doing that. Where in Zwift's case, making new content is very hard. Yeah. <laughs> or it seems very hard. It does. So my Woosh probably has a department that's just doing new content. That's totally yeah. separate from the pack dynamics people and the pack dynamics people are having a tough time figuring it out where the make new worlds team is just constantly pumping out new worlds every month and a half. Yeah. yeah. Because being on unreal engine, I mean, the hell they could hire those <clears throat> freelance, you know, short term people. Hey, build me a world. You know what I mean? Like oh, whatever, Fiverr yeah. or whatever. So, Probably. See if you seriously could uh, get yeah, a person off of Fiverr to because it's a known <laughs> it's a known entity in the software development community. When you uh, go to Zwift, you probably have to spend a month getting up to speed on their custom game engine. And that skill doesn't apply to any game engine that actually exists. It's only for Zwift. So even after you learn it, you're like, well, where can I go after this? Because I have this like custom knowledge that I can't use anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's 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 beneficial if you have created your own game engine and you retain artists to work on that game engine and you get them up to speed and they are working on new levels and, and you know, creating content. Kind of like uh, 
that's how game engines are built. Like there's a lot of game engines that are custom and sometimes those are outsourced uh, that are not like your traditional Unity Unreal. And <clears throat> it helps when you have developers or uh, what is it? Contractors. You can hire on people that, because a lot of, a lot of people think they just want to work at one place. There's a lot of, there's a lot of artists that just like, I want to work for six months or three weeks to make some money so I can go travel around the world and then come back after three weeks. Like there's a lot of people that just like work a little bit, take a break, take a break, come back and work and they can get contract work all the time. That's harder to do when you have a custom fitness app that doesn't really yeah. have like, Hey, it's easy to just like, we can just add roads here. Cause there's so many of those like dead end, those sort of like side streets for lack of a better term in Zwift in like the Florida Richmond. I was right. I like writing Richmond. I like the, the fan flats where it's like just the, 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 the flat little road that goes around. There's also little side streets. I mean, you can, you could have done, they could have done in my opinion, more things through Richmond, but they only did, it's only like five routes on Richmond, right? Same with uh, Yorkshire. <laughs> Yorkshire is very limited in what they've done. Uh, just well, for the, the, it's all the world championship stuff. Yeah. Cause when you have like a custom game engine, you're making all of those assets by hand yourself in your own graphic design department. And that's where game engines like unreal and unity have catalogs of hundreds yeah. of thousands of yeah. pre-made assets that you can just drag, yeah. drop, drag, drop, drag, drop. Like if you can go on YouTube and just type in, unreal world building and in a 20 minute youtube video dudes made road with mountains and trees and it looks amazing but he's just picking from like a pre-made catalog where in zwift you have probably someone making that tree oh somebody made that new road texture yeah on whitopia which is i haven't seen it yet <sighs> I noticed it, it today for the first time. I, I've been gone all I, week. I, I was watching uh, one of our uh, Lumo stream. I was watching one of our mm -hmm. community members streams, uh, TJ stream. And I brought it up. I'm like, I didn't notice it until I, you know, you kind of just like, I have a very photographic, like I visually remember things. And so like when I see something different, you know, like, you know, those old like things where it's like, oh, what's different on this picture versus this picture. And you can remember like, oh, this is different. And you circle it at the dentist office highlights, the old highlights magazines. I don't know if you guys have that in Canada, but we yeah. have that in the United States. And I'm like, Oh, that that road looks different. I'm like, Hey, well, did they make, did they decide to spend development time to make the road look shittier? That's what they decided to do. Uh, well, okay. I will just, I, I rode through it at Mach 10 today on my race. So, could they have done it? Like, say it's based off a New yeah, Mexico road. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, let, let's there say this is based off a New Mexico or Arizona. In there. <laughs> and that's that's the style of roads. I don't know. I mean, maybe it is the style of roads. Based... Oh, here's the thing. Look, all our roads here look like this. Yeah. yeah actually, I was going to say that actually this, looks this, realistic. This looks realistic. I, just I rode today. get that. I get that it looks realistic. Yeah. yeah. But it looks worse than the road before. So it's like they're trying to make it look worse. And that's that was my complaint is they spent time to make it look real for a desert because that's what happens is you do the asphalt, you lay down the stuff. Well, the, you the, notice the sand actually. Yeah, no, it, covers the comes off it looks the side. great. My problem is, is why if it's a made up world with cartoon <laughs> everything else, this is what they've decided to spend their Someone time. Someone hand laid yeah, all of it, those cracks for the 15k of the desert. Yeah. No, they're not nailing the cracks. They're all repetitive. It's just the same crack. It's you look it's, at the snake on the right, and you yeah. look at the little squiggles. They're all it's the same. They're just, they're just, they just, yeah, they just lay them it's, down. It's 400, 500 meters of a conveyor belt of the same road. But I, I think what you're getting at, Brian, I think is, is where I'm at is. Who, who sat down in a conference room somewhere when they're setting priorities of what our developers are going to work on and say, yep, toward the top of the list, Jim's going to go put a new texture on this road because that's going to matter. Like, why why is that a decision that they're investing time in? Because it, yeah. it's, 
changes nothing about Maybe. i mean i like the way it looks don't get me oh, wrong no, no. I, yes I, it, it, <laughs> right but it's like wh why is that floating to the top and actually making it into game releases or has that has that been on a whiteboard for years and yeah they just have gotten to it and they're like oh we'll just do it and now it's like a big announcement they're yeah. like hey we did because it was a zwift insider article i went and found it and it's like i get that they're trying to make it realistic but i'm like mm -hmm. Look, I live in a town that actually has shitty roads like that, right? Like, all I all I see is, oh, well, we don't have the money or we don't have the taxpayer money to fix this infrastructure to make the roads better. Everyone rides these roads that are in Zwift now and dream of the smooth roads that Zwift used to have. We're like, oh, I love that's like no, go, go ride on, okay, go yeah. right around the farms. Like, because Casey lives in farmland too. Like, he lives in cornfields too. I have cornfields, and you're just like, as soon as you hit a one little patch that they've like, oh, I'm not gonna patch it. I'm gonna do like a full thing. You're like, this is amazing. Yeah, not the amazing that I talk about all the time, but like, yeah. I'm actually uh, this is awesome that this is like a smooth road think, in the middle of your nowhere. Your avatar should bounce over well, every if it was, and, but the thing is is there's no change in resistance if it actually was like okay the desert has a slower course because we put in this new texture and they slowed it down i'm cool with that i'm cool with that but they did so the neo road <laughs> feel like the neo road feel in the yeah. springtime those little black lines need to knock your teeth out yeah that's when it gets real right like you ever yeah. go out to you go out here right after the winter that first springtime ride where it warms up and those 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 cracks start opening up, man, you'll knock your teeth out going over I was, everyone. Oh, yeah, I yeah. was riding <laughs> farm <laughs> roads today where I pretty much was like, F this road. Because it was like, <laughs> like the whole time. And I'm like, who the heck picked this route? I would never ride on that road. And now Tempest is done. I, if you, no one would ride if your Neo like jolted you and you're, you oh. bit your tongue every time. So I think I think Bucky's might have hit on it here though, Brian, is this is this is Eric Min's low hanging fruit. Somewhere mm -hmm. somebody yeah. complained about road surface and this is the low hanging fruit. There's the roads that I rode on I ride on. See that pothole? <laughs> yeah. That's the that's road it. that I ride on. Oh, that is pothole. That's like Yeah, that's a giant that's, pothole. That's at a four that's, way that's a it's actually a T. So this is that's a tire this is one of our roof rides. This is on a I didn't take a but see the lines? That's where they do the little black things and they mm -hmm. but this is a patch, they got a patch patch. But they just put the little like black lines in there. Yeah, where they put the. I'm black not going. Oh, I can't. I would love the way that this looks. No, you want the smooth pave. You want the. You want the utopian road that we used to have. Well, what would happen if the road looked smooth well, and it, it was orange? Curtis. Would you be fine with that? The what? If the road looked super smooth, but it was blue and orange. That's fine. Like New York. Great. No, like like the <laughs> the climb portals. Oh, those roads oh, look smooth. I've done one. Yeah, well, but the roads are smooth. I, I'm though. like, I'm like, Mr. Like Luma because brings you're us just up all like, time. I want fantasy roads that Nothing I always will make dream of. That game. Well, what about know. red and yellow and blue? The and it's the it's the virtual vel. What is it? The velo viewer. It's a velo viewer racing or riding. That's all it is. Oh, it's a velo viewer. Velo viewer to show the you. The climb portal. Yeah, the yeah. climb portal is just velo viewer, I, which is I, low hanging fruit. It's like, okay, this. Okay, is this the community asking for? Hey, we want the the less whatever smoother roads we want it to look like it's in a desert okay when did they start and when do they stop listening to the community i last week i said they should be telling the community what they're doing and they sort of like there's this there's this like is in between it, sort of stuff is this the first thing that they've listened to the community who was there this? a zwift forum post who asked for this who yeah, asked where, for where hey, make the roads more <laughs> aid make the road not not the not the whatever the uh, resistance because they changed the dirt resistance which i don't like i don't like the dirt i don't go ride in the courses that do the dirt i do races in the that are only on if i do a ride through the dirt it's because it's a race that i'm doing i don't like it but i don't i'm not complaining that it's slow because they should make it fast I just understand that they've made it slower and you got to ride in the thing. That's a strategy. This is like just a cosmetic thing when they should have made it, hey, in this stretch of Watopia or whatever, Tempest Fugit, this is a different kind of track and you're going to have a little bit of a resistance hit. And so you have to work harder here. Is that, am I, am no, I, I, going out of, am I going crazy on that or no? 
Yes. Because like, okay. you're saying like you, the fresh pavement you get, just like you said earlier, it's like, oh my God, this is amazing. And yeah. You're flying. And then you get back to where the resistance is higher on the old one. That's the it's a so, mental thing for a race. It's like there's, because yeah. when I do, there's a race yeah. that we, uh, around here uh, and it's like a climb, right? So a big climb, but on the backside, it used to be a rough road and then it became smooth. They like repaved the entire thing. And it is like a fast track. It's like a treadmill almost on the backside. Cause you have, a, it's also a, a place where it's windy. You know where our windmills are in California? It's like just below that. So like when you see, oh, the windmills in California, it's like a I love it's that. races in there. So the climb goes up the hills that are on the windmills called Patterson Pass. And on the backside is this super fast, smooth track. And I was just screaming with it, right? That's what I would like. But if you it's roll like up it, on the black top, yeah, everything soon becomes as, quiet. Yeah, yeah. Every and like as soon as you turn silence. yeah, you turn right to go back yeah. to the finish line or whatever. It's, you go back towards the start of the thing, which is uh sort of in this sort of like fields area. That's where you have this rougher road. You're not getting that sort of resistance or the rolling resistance. So it's a change. So it's a strategy. It's like, hey, I can go really hard when it's super smooth, but I know I'm gonna have to get as much uh head start or whatever time. A gap to to have it survive. That's what I wish it would have done. And they didn't. They didn't do that. Maybe they will. Maybe they should. I don't know. Moving on. Yes, we done with this one. I think we can go to the race scoring. Yeah, because I need. I need. I need to understand. I'm totally lost on what the race score. We talked about this last week. Please explain it to me again. <laughs> How am I going well, up and down without even doing anything? That's my first question. Are are you setting any power? You're because I did this too. I set a higher twelve minute power. That was the only thing that changed. I had a higher uh, twelve minute power, and my race score dropped twelve points. So if you have any power PRs, just like I had, an, FTP, I had an FTP bump yesterday in my race. Yeah. Well, that's why you lost points in Zwift math. For some reason, you set a twelve minute effort, and that's the only one you set. Just a twelve minute effort. No, it was in a race. Your race, your race score, and your Zwift Z, your ZFTP will drop. Don't ask me why. Mm. I, it's beyond me. Go up makes no sense. Or go I, down. I, 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 Casey and I have went through this <laughs> for since it came out. If you set a one 12 minute effort, I guarantee you your ZFTP will go down. I was at one point. Like I had a 340 ZFTP and I went out and did a six minute effort at like, I don't know, 400 Watts and my ZFTP went down to 328. I just, I ju what you're saying is I just did it with all this race course stuff. I set a 12 minute effort. My race score went from like 570 at that time down to five, 550. Like I lost whatever it was, how many, how many points I can't remember now, maybe it was 10 points. So it went down to 560. And that's all I did. I set a power PR and it wasn't in a race score event. It was just me riding. And it wasn't uh, the, and it wasn't the 30 second or 10 minute number that they no. scored. So are on. you, are you racing against yourself now and not other people? Like, how are you gaining points? Or losing okay. Points? So ZFTP and ZMAP, the same category enforcement, They've got that curve that gives you the Z map and the ZFTP. So you've got your curve and race score sits on top of it. So that's what your seed score is. They take some magic al algorithm based on your current numbers and they have a curve. All right. So say you, you bump one of them up, you know, or all of them. And that's how your seed score goes up. Your race score seed, like where you start, like to say, Say you've been, don't do a single race score event and you simply just ride. Like like before Lumo started doing, like Bullet Fall would be a good one. All he does is trains. So they're taking his power and whatever it is, I don't know his race score. Let's just say it's 700. All right. So then now he starts racing. So anything he does on top of that just goes up and up and up and up. That's what with me, I set basically in the past 30 days, all new PRs and I've got 110 points or so, 100 points of race score improvement. And I've only gained from racing about 60 points. That's the biggest thing. It's a curve based off your power to put okay. you where you need to start. 
And I, I have I have a question. Yes. You're get you're gaining racing score points for not racing. Or you're getting, losing points racing. You're getting hold on. This is a scoring system called racing score. Yes. Is this called race okay. what's the official word? Is it yeah, it's race race score. Mm -hmm. Yet you never race and it fluctuates. Yes. Because if if let's your just say your baseline's yeah. based on power. And uh, it's not just power in racing, it's your total power curve that you've showed to Zwift. So basically the the simplest way that I can look at racing scores, you've always got that baseline. You're at this level and then as you race, you find a buoyancy, a floating point above that based on your results. So your results can't, can't change by not racing. So how far above your line is dictated based on your racing results, but your baseline has nothing to do with racing. It has to do with power. So mm -hmm. you move from your baseline based on results, but your baseline can move based on power. So if I, if I started with a baseline of 600, I did two races and I moved up to 620, and then I did a event where I did a 30 second, 10 minute power PR. If I moved my baseline theoretically from 600 to 620, now my racing scar is probably going to be like 640 because I, I gained 20 points from racing and now I've bumped 20 points in my baseline from the power that had nothing to do with race. It was just a power bump. That actually very, makes sense to me, like the yeah. way you just explained it. Because oh, you, it's, it makes perfect yeah. sense. Is it better? Yes. Well, what we already have, or what yes, we it, shouldn't, or we should have. A, is it the best thing? I don't I think know. It what, could be, I think it could be better, but well, I think what it, it is now, but it's luxury. better than what we had. I think if you have no races under your belt, then they should seed you based on power. Once you've actually started racing and you've got and you it show and you show that you are consistently racing, that underlying power seeding thing should go away and or have less weight. Like they do need to seed people because they don't want people like pro dudes who don't Zwift show up and have to work their way up by racing 15 times to get to the pro level. They're pros. They should go straight to the pros because their power FTP and all their numbers is high. But once you've consistently raced, like it's basically two buckets. Mm -hmm. You have your power, like what case is your power bucket and your race score bucket. Your power bucket should be getting smaller as your race score bucket gets bigger to a point where you could get an FTP bump, but it's not going to move you up to the next bracket. Yeah. Completely. Because you, you, if, if you have 10, if you have 10 race results in the last month, your power shouldn't make a damn bit of difference. Like zero. Yes. It doesn't matter at all. You've got enough race results and legitimate races. It doesn't matter a bit. I think that'd be great. But if you come in with no or minimal race results, you can't have the A-plus power guy that has no race results blowing up the fourth cat because you're always going to have that guy and you're always going to have your miserable lower-level racers because there's always going to be that guy blowing it up that has no race results. I think that'd be a good change, but, but the simple, is it better than what we have today? Yes. Um, I think it's better. I think Bucky's asked me this on my, on my, my rant on my stream today was like the, the quick, why is it better? And to me, the simple, why is it better is you should have less people that are forever relegated to never having a competitive race. Yeah. That it, you should move around enough that most people should be able to find some form of competitive racing as they race more and it fluctuates. And, and I got to say this for all the people in my area of the world within your fitness, top end B, low A in the cat enforcement world, and then this race score, I'm sitting just below 700. So that I did the tiny races yesterday. I was the only B out of 30 people or maybe 20 or whatever that it was. I was the only B and I finished fifth, 13th, 20th, and like 18th. Like you have to show up and do the races. You can't show up and expect an easy win. You have to go, you do the work. Like I finished fifth in a sprint in like 
whatever. And then on these punchy little rides, I was finishing in front of A pluses. Like, how is that possible? It's because I'm in the race and I'm racing. I'm actually like trying. So guys getting irritated because like, oh, I can't be competitive. you got to show up and race, learn how to race. Like there's no way I should finish in front of A plus riders in a tiny race. Like, are you serious? Your watts per kilogram is at minimum a watt per kilogram higher than me in, in everything. You know what I mean? And then I'm beating you. Like, so it comes down to understand how to race. And no other B in category enforcement wise was what I'm referring to. Like I was in a top group. I could only select the, I think it was 650 to 1000 race score. And I was 688. Like you got to show up and race. Like I knew I was going to get my ass kicked because I was in that group. But guess what? I turned out, I did excellent. So, and that's the, that's the overall reaching to everyone, no matter where you're at, show up and race because you don't know what's going to happen today. So Today was the perfect thing. I, I had no idea who was going to be there. It was a mass start. We had some A's working and a couple teammates, and I raced. I raced. I did my workout. I wanted to go hard, and like I chased everything possible. I just looked at it. I chased for two minutes downhill to catch these guys, and they were, they were pushing the pace. They were above four and a half watts to 5.4 downhill and i caught them because i wasn't giving up that's what you got to do and that's what the zwift mentality is i'm going to sit in and get an easy ride and sprint so we talked about racing and workouts i think last week or episode before yeah you get in it's a race you are going to do what you can to finish well so and that's my biggest thing with race score and category enforcement this whole thing you got to do the races yeah, but you, you open up the, I understand the, the, that. I get the, it. I and mean, this is uh, this is supposedly, from what I understand, is to replace categories. Mm -hmm. it's, right? Yeah. yeah. And what Brian just said is exactly why racer score is good. Brian is upclassing because he's a smart racer. He is punching above his weight, beating mm -hmm. guys who he shouldn't be beating because he's smart. And that's only happening because of racer score, because he's winning or doing well against guys he shouldn't necessarily be doing well. So either yeah. the guys who have massive FTPs that are underperforming get sick of underperforming and learn how to race, or they stop racing. So this is like yeah. a perfect example of why racer score is fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I've been struggling with this, and, and Brian's in the same boat. I go into these races and we always, you know, on paper, I'm like, I'm, I'm outclassed, but it's hard to argue with the racing score because I'm showing up and I'm still performing well in the race. So it's like, I can argue that I shouldn't be racing against these people because I'm way outclassed based on all the numbers. But as long as I'm showing up to the races and I'm still getting, you know, top 50% or, you know, top fives and podiums and, and, I'm I'm stuck in cat one. I'm I'm about 15, 20 points ahead of Brian right now. I mean, he's yeah. closing on me, but um and I got some easy wins today by happenstance and I was I was ranting about it, but <laughs> I did two cat one races today and won them both. Um I you know, so I'm gonna be up in the seven twenties, seven thirties. So is this um, gonna is this gonna change when we get more people in the races? I think it's in the winter it's gonna change a lot, but I think people like Brian and I that are really good racers that are, you know, what would be classified as top B racers, I think we're going to we're gonna find that buoyancy point in that seven hundred range. I think depending how they break them, we're gonna float between that first and second category all the time. If I dip down into that second category, I two or three races, I'm gonna gain ten points a race, I'm gonna bump back up, I'm gonna get destroyed by the Dr. Weebles of the world and to get bumped back down right like right now there's not enough people in the races that's how i gained points today one race had four people in it one guy rage quit because he was off the front i mean i won because the guy off the front was so good he was mad he didn't have competition and he left so he gifted me the win and mm -hmm. then the second race was one other guy so uh, you know if there's more competition that was kind of my rant today is is in a competitive race i'm going to be mediocre and I'm going to gain a bunch of points for the lack of people right now. So yeah. um, that's the struggle. But when it gets to the key is more people need to race it more because 
we're still seeing people in the lower categories that are like, I'm always stuck mid pack. I'm always back of pack. The, the people that are beating them in the third or fourth category need to race enough like Brian and I, we are a hundred to 120 points above that baseline score for us now. Yeah. We, you need those 450 and 500 point guys that are winning every race to also do 10, 15 races to get that, 100 point lift off their baseline and get out of those lower categories the guys that are doing these once a week they haven't moved enough to find that yeah. what i call the buoyancy point mm-hmm. and their power doesn't change them like you're saying that it doesn't as push long as they're up. not setting prs yeah i mean we've seen some guys i think hard claws is one of them right that he keeps getting bumped just because he's going out there and setting numbers and he's frustrated because yeah. he's like i'm off the back and i'm gaining 40 points a race but he's setting numbers and, yeah, and I, I get that frustration. I really do. That's yeah, that, I did that. that I got hard. second place in the race yesterday with him. Yeah, and I think I gained ten points. And he gained like forty points, right? Yeah. Same race. Yeah. So why did I not? So the other thing too is I have a problem with it not telling me anything. Like I have to yeah. go. It's like it doesn't tell me. Oh, you gained this many points, or you yeah. lost this many points, and it'd be like, well, how did I learn? Or how did I lose points? Or you only gained so many points. It's like. I think I, I had an FTP bump in my race and I got second place out of the seven people that showed up. So they it's need like, a nice clean racing history thing where it's just like you started here, you raced this race, you got plus 10 for results, plus five for power. Yeah. They you should be on here, that on the results. Here, it should, like just, it should auto calculate like, Hey, yeah. you gain, you went up, like a green arrow up, you gained this many points. Or you had red arrow down, like even though you got first, you you raced against. Oh, a hundred percent. It needs to be like Zwift Power, where it shows you per race why you did what you did. Yeah. Like they need that, without a doubt. Yeah. Because so, that's also that's why Zwift, it's confusing that's a, because people have no clue why they're going up and down. Yeah, and they put that at the uh, they put that in the description of the race where the Zwift Labs race. It's like, hey, after your race, put fill out the thing. Didn't prompt me. To fill out the thing, like how yeah. was your race? How was your Swift Labs race? It's like it's ugh. well, I, and now I've even got a bug to where, my, like, when I finish an event, my event screen pops up, but then you go when you hit end rod and you can hit event details. It says waiting for Rogers to finish. Like there's a bug with that. That needs to be incorporated. Like your race. No, no, that's up and good. Down. That's like Indie Velo. Like Indie Velo, you can't end the you can't end your ride without letting everyone finish. I like that. Well, I, I rode for like a half hour after that. You know what I mean? Like I'm, st- I'm just oh, saying there, the past, that's like, a bug. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not saying like what you're saying. Yes, I understand. But like, this is like, I sh- I have a screenshot when I've crossed the line. Mm-hmm. I ride for 20 minutes or half hour, whatever it is, and then uh, I go to click to get the full results instead of just me or whatever get the full of them, the screenshot, and it says come back later. I'm like, well. <laughs> I've already finished. I know everyone else has. Like the other day at the tiny races, I rode for a half hour afterwards, and I wanted to get the you know full screenshot. Well, it was gone, or I just wanted to look at the power. I think is what it was. But regardless, so that's a bug. But that needs incorporated into that finish screen and make it easier to find. Whether they're going to, you can find it on your Zwift. You got to go to Zwift profile, go to the race, go through that. You can find it, but it's not. I guess. We're so used to Zwift power. That's just what we go to. So I don't know. I but you do, you do need the tracking history of how, how, it, how you did. It should Easy be Zwift.com. I boycott Zwift power. Yeah. So how was, BK, how was your Zwift points race? Was it a good race? Uh, yeah, it was, it was the uh, whatever reverse, the epic reverse or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is a tough, tough thing. Oh, I had an issue with my my virtual shift, swifting, uh, virtual shifting. shifting. I don't know why. In the middle of the, after I crested the first climb of the first lap, like virtual shifting, virtual gearing went away. So I don't know what's going on with that. It's, huh. I think I'm on the blacklist. I think I'm just on the blacklist with that game. Uh, no, it went well. The- I I broke it down after my after my race. Uh, I couldn't hang with the dude in the last climb. He kind of rode away with me, uh, but the it was hard claws and I signed it because he was like, "Hey, let's race." Okay, so I raced. It was like three p.m. my time, whatever six a.m. for him or whatever it was, and people joined in late, so it was it went from 
three signups to seven. We had uh, a couple of different little things on the, uh, the rollers and uh, the little different little climbs and the, uh, Oh, I had an issue with the uh, play controllers. Uh, the steering still worked. The issue is, is now whether people have the ability to buy it or they don't want to buy it. I purposely didn't steer out of the draft when I was in the breakaway with the, uh, it was myself and another guy in the lead. I purposely didn't steer into the inside, even though I had steering and he didn't to not have him fall out of the draft to stay together in the draft. And yeah. he wasn't taking, uh, he, and I was in another breakaway earlier in the race. There was somebody that had steers, w- the plays with me or steering with me or positioning, whatever you want to call it. And they didn't position in the tightest line. So it's sort of like this sort of like, we're not taking advantage of it, even though we had the ability to. And so you don't want to force somebody to do it. It's like, you can't say, Hey, take the inside line. Like you can't, I mean, you guys, you could, I got to chat it and said, you know, take the inside line, yeah. but there's still that mix of people being able to use it and take advantage of it. And there's people that don't have it or don't use the one that they have because of whatever they are against it or whatever it's making for not optimal racing. So overall, you asked my question, how was the racing? It was good. It was, it was, I wish it was more people. But I was in the, what is it, the 54, 440 to 550 or 580 points. So it was the second tier points, which is like a Cat B mm-hmm. race. Uh, but at least we had seven people. I think the the 550 to 1,000 only had like one or two, like one sign up. So the numbers are not there. No, not but at the all. Race, and the racing it's like Brian was saying is like people are not they're The race know-how is just not there. Whether it is the race know-how and they don't want to use it because it's Zwift or they, they do, they uh, don't know how to do it. They don't know how to like, Hey, let's attack, let's counter attack or uh, you know, not pull the person back up. Like uh, there's a good shot on my stream. I don't know if Lee wants to search for it and whatever, but it's in one of the mid, like, uh, after after the the Italian villa, you can see us all scattered across the road. Like we're not in like a streamline. Like there's only seven of us. They're all kind of like I'm in the inside lane. The other two there. There's hard claws had steering, steering, and another person had steering, and we all steered to the left to the inside line. And then you, you, I did a look behind, and it was like it was like a yard sale. Like people were all over the place. So yeah. like the auto that whatever they were trying to say that they're doing, the auto get back into the draft if you don't have steering doesn't do it as well as I think it should do it. But it's also like, there's some people that are doing it manually. Like I was, I should not have, I should not have a disadvantage of having to use my mental, my brain power while I'm racing and my fingers to do it. And somebody else just lines up perfectly and they just, they just, you know, mindlessly ride. Yeah. 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 You, you should have a little bit of advantage by having the steering but it still needs to be better for the non-steer. I agree. Now, and now you were saying in racing, like I don't race like you were describing it. If, if I am with someone, I don't dive for the apex of every corner in a breakaway unless I'm trying to shake them. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I'm doing it's, the same thing you were doing. Yes, 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 yeah, yes. Yeah, I, I just kind of try to... I, turn, and, and I, don't we, use it, I don't use it to my advantage, yeah, unless I'm trying do to it, prop them. Yeah, I do it when I'm solo to cut the corners and try yeah, to cut. Yeah, that's it. what I was. Yep, we're on the but same page. I find it. I find it for whatever reason. It completely enrages me when they start diving for the apex of every mm-hmm. corner. Like uh, watching the end of Brian's stream today, Marblehead, when he's climbing that climb, and two of those guys were diving to the inside of every corner, going up the hill. Like I was raging watching it because yeah, right. <laughs> I know how much he's suffering, and I just get mad i'm like just hold your line right like i i want to be out on the road where i'm just screaming at a guy to just yeah. just hold your line right yeah, yeah, just yeah. just stay the re- put the, the 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 big thing for me is is there's no uh sense of danger when you do that where yeah. in real life you don't dive corners like you're not just diving oh, okay. corners right where in Zwift it's like i'll just dive corners and they don't know 
there's I, there isn't really an indicator to say hey that's a penalizing you like hey you're taking a longer whatever or this sort it's colliding with you like you're like hey you might t- collide and slow you might whatever yeah because in real life when you're climbing yeah. a hill that steep and there's switchbacks your choices either go wide so it's not gradient. as steep yeah yeah lower or you cut the corner and it ramps up to 17 yeah. percent, and you so i don't but zwift doesn't do that i don't believe it's just the same gradient no matter what part of the turn That's, you're in so someone I would like did to something that. on the alp there is a difference on the alp back in the day when steering came out the sturzo i remember that i'll just use round numbers let's say it's like 9k up the alp whatever it is it was like 13 well, <laughs> isn't it 13k? Well, from the bottom, I don't know. It's uh, whatever. Sure, we'll call it 17 or was 17k, 13k, whatever it is. It was a chunk, like a a, a sizable mm-hmm. chunk on the. If I remember, I, I can't remember now. It's been years ago when the when st- steering the Alp was out. Someone did something on it, and there was a difference, but I don't know if I can. What find was the it. first thing? The Steerzo was the first thing. Yeah, an exclusive agreement. They had the Sturzo. Exclusive agreement. Was there a secondary thing that was steering? Some Besides the, the riser. Bike. What's that? The smart bike. Some of the smart bikes had steering. Smart bikes had the, the buttons. Came out. You're right. Yeah, smart yeah, bikes yeah. has the buttons. And then there was the, the, the Elite riser, which has steering as well, which I think is supported by Zwift. But so, the, yeah. most, of the steering, most of the steering conversation came when RGT introduced steering. And everyone's like, oh, can yeah. I use the Sturzo? And it was sort of not supposed to be supported, but it was supported. But that was that, lane steering, which I still like the Chevron. Remember the the lane indicator? The RGT oh. steering hack was totally to use the phone app with yeah. the Steerzo. Because the Steerzo would tip your phone just enough yeah. that it would activate the steering through the app. Yeah. I I would have loved RGT steering with the plays. Oh, I, I would have oh, loved so awesome. RGT steering with yeah. the place. My yeah. biggest aggravation as I was tired of riding one handed because I had a hand on yeah. the keyboard the whole time. Yeah. Like I. Well, that, that was the was thing. That was, that was the thing that was like a hit and a miss with RGT. Is it was a hit in a sense that everyone had access to steering. The miss yeah. was that the steering was not as clean as position tactical position is which indie velo sort of like i was my term when i was bringing it up i was like it's not really steering it's like positioning like tactically positioning yourself yeah. which zwift gets it well done as does it well indie velos is like v- much slower it's not it's there but it's not like an overbearing it's not dominating the the race experience but I was using in the race that I was doing yesterday, I was getting in the line. Like I, I felt like I was getting popped out a little bit. I'm like, Oh, I'll get, I'll get back in. Cause I had it on my arrow bars and it was kind of awkward. I just had it so that I could, Oh, and those buttons are so small for shifting. Like the, the steering is perfect for shifting yeah. and the buttons for shifting are too small compared to the yeah. steering. So I wish there was like a split where you could have like the steering portion a f- a like like that orange thing would be like one would be the shifting map them. yeah or button map them or whatever but i was like hey i i'm just doing a little like it's one or two things it's kind of like my kicker move kicker move thing where you have like a little like it's that sort of like r- that little subtle settle that subtle resting where you're like hey you get out of the saddle and you sit back down you kind of you kind of just rock a little bit a lot of people, when they first get on something or they first steer, they steer like I remember when Lee was first doing it. He was like going all the way to the left and all the way to the right, and like you okay. test it all the way out. But then when you get the fine tuning, like with the racing, oh, you don't use like, it as much as you're you. like. It's yeah. like it's like a dit dit like that. Like Casey's saying, if the, we had the little like lane indicators just to kind of visually like go, oh, I can get right on this person's wheel. Dit, dit. That is actually the main reason I used it was to put myself back in the draft because Zwift would still just shoot you off the draft yeah. for no reason. And you're like, why did it do that? So you kind of like. Yeah. And it, it, it yeah. go ahead, go ahead. No, that's a, th- to me, that's, that was the big ta-da for the steering is before steering once or twice in every race, I was ranting because Zwift wasn't placing me where I wanted to be on the road. I was hung out to the side. Yeah. I had to, 
I had to give more power. I had to drop back in the pack to slide in. With steering, I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. So that's all I want it for is just that correction of the draft. That's really all uh, I use yeah. it for. Yeah, and, and the one other thing that we always, at least I always wanted, because I use RGT so much, is the little draft indicator. When we did have steering, mm -hmm. you could clearly go, oh, I want to get back on the right wheel. And your draft yep. indicator would go, whoop. Like it would like, it would yep. like say, oh, you're saving 250 watts versus 45. Uh, Indie Velo, Indie Velo has that because it has a little, a little draft gauge uh, thing. But it, yeah. I like the RGT one because it was like a, 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 like a tangible number to go like, you're saving this minute, you're saving this many watts, you know, when you're in the draft. And even if you were side by side where Zwift doesn't show anything. So you're like, I believe if I'm <laughs> behind the person's wheel, I'm going to have more draft savings. So I'm going to position back into the, into the pack versus just to have it kick me out to the side. Yeah. And, and sauce shows that very well. Right, I know. Swift needs to do it in the game. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm with you, but you and, can't and, get the verification if you have sauce. Yeah. There's that weird thing too. The shifters, I do agree with you, Brian. I'm struggling with that actually. I'm for whatever reason I'm I'm struggling with my hands a little bit at about 60 to 90 minutes into a ride. My hands are getting numb a little bit. Oh and from, I from, I'm, the, from your yeah, but yeah, I'm having yeah. a hard time shift. I'm having a hard time finding yeah. the shifters because yeah, yeah, yeah. my fingers are numb. So but I can steer fine because those are a little those easier are big to buttons. find. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's I'm having why, a hard time shifting late in yeah. a ride. I don't know if that's the thing, is I don't have a uh, I've never seen the the Zwift ride. I don't know anybody that has it, which is the bike, the frame, the Zwift frame, yeah. whatever we'll call it, the frame ride. The new buttons don't they? They I think they have like a clicker. They look like they have clickers on or whatever, which is the the gearing clicker thing for the. Mm -hmm. It seems like they have better buttons. I don't know if those are mapped correctly, but like hopefully the Zwift the plays product. have a version two coming that would have a better sh like that that sort of side s very slim button for gear shifting virtual gearing is too small it's too small yeah. especially yeah, that, when you're that, in the heat of battle like you're getting numb but also yeah. we're sweaty we're in the heat of battle and you're like the most important thing right now is shifting yep. and it's hard yeah, it, they look more substantial on the ride, yeah. but I haven't I haven't uh, physically seen one. I'm hoping. I mean, yeah, I think the plays should should maybe improve on that. I think Lee would be with me on this. I just want to buy the handlebars that are on. There's the, ride. the button things. Just sell me the hoods, right? I'll just take oh, the yeah. shifters on the indoor bike and I'll put those hoods on it. Yeah, I mean, hopefully. But see how the buttons are right there. Can you zoom in a little bit? Is that can people see that? But there's the there's that orange button which is like a shifter. So yeah, go down. So that's going to be the steer brake, right? That's if, a better button. Hopefully that looks that looks like a shift yeah. up and shift down. But you'd have to be in yeah, the, the you'd have to be team. in the yeah, you'd have to be in the drop. It looks like you have to be in the drops. Maybe they're a little bit higher, but like the large orange steering tactical positioning is not what I'm focused on most of the time in the heat of the battle, like going up a climb, yeah. like the like the hey the little inclines coming out of the rollers. I want to be in the right I want to be able to shift correctly. And uh, having those more tactical buttons would be way better. So I'd like to just have to a feel of the buttons right? as well. Like you actually want to feel like a yeah. Crack. They're very slim. Can you bring up the the current plays versus? Can you do a side by side? Look at this on the call. Hey, visual the audio only audience. We have a shot of the Zwift play, <laughs> Zwift ride. It's a longer thing, longer shifter thing. But yeah, Casey was right. If these with plays worked with RGT, man, that would have been awesome. I think people yeah. would have been way more into it. I think the other, the miss was the flow, which we've talked about before, the flow of the Peloton. We were kind of doing the yard sale all the time where everyone was kind of shifting all over the roads because they were trying to find the lines where we just didn't, it just didn't sort of like auto did that for us. Mm -hmm. And maybe they pursued that. Like... I don't think they I don't think they had the ability to do both at the same time and that's why it sort of failed. Like it was either on or off. Yeah, those buttons are those are those buttons. So the buttons to the so the for the audio only audience, 
bring up your slide of the Zwift play, the current Zwift plays that are still in beta. Uh, those little like slivers, they look bigger than they are. They're yeah, they're not, not as big. big. Because when you wrap, so like it looks like there's a lot of space. Go back to the original play, the current play. That's the Zwift ride. But the current play, it looks like, oh, that's a plenty, that's plenty of space. When well, you wrap stay. when you wrap it around the bar, you lose a lot of that surface area because it stretches that sort of well, and they're kind uh, of inset. They they're don't inset, stick out yeah. as much compared with the yeah. the new they're ones. A, they actually they're like stick a, out. Yeah. They're like a silicone covered button underneath to help with to help with moisture yeah. and sweat and all that stuff. I understand the design. I'm not saying that they need they just need a more instead of a recessed button, they need a more what's the opposite of recessed. Right. It's kind of concave and it concave, needs to have a raised because yeah. right. Like that's where my Audi is. is yeah, an Audi. The, they need an Audi, not an any. With the numb fingers, whatever that texture there isn't noticeable. But if it if it had some sort of bump to it, yeah. right? I could I could find that a little easier. Yeah, even well, like, like, a, um, like yeah. one's up, one's down. Like, yeah, like a can... television remote, you know, some of those television yeah. remotes that have like, like the, t like the Swift play or the Swift play, sorry, the Apple TV remote that the old one with the touch, those buttons, uh, and those are not for like moisture and sweat, but more tactical or tactile th things where you can less slippage. That's better. It has a grip. It has a little grip. Like the orange is a good grip. And even at the bottom. So for the for the audio only audio only audience, at the bottom and the top of the orange uh break, let's for lack of a better term, or lack of a better description, the breaking area, your finger fits really well in the bottom of that. So you can you can actually take your middle finger, slide it all the way to the bottom of your play in the orange area, and you can sort of either break inside, push inside inward or pull outward and that'll steer you. If those had a button, it would be much better. I don't think we've, I'd like to have that. a paddle. I'd like to have a paddle back there. Just like, like the Shimano shifter paddle, you know, behind mm -hmm. the steer. If it was just a paddle that you pushed. Like a click rather than a button. Rather than the shifter, rather than it being a button, actually be a, a paddle on a pendulum on a, on a swing, right? Well, oh, that's just, a moving part. I wouldn't want that because that would be more prone to breaking. Like, like the old mechanical shifters. So you have to remember that this is like the DI2. or right, I, don't, I don't have any of that fancy stuff, man. Neither do I. I have mechanicals, but I've, I've ridden somebody. I've, have you ever ridden a bike with DI2? Very briefly. Okay, they're just buttons. It's like... And it's way better, but I don't have it where that's, this is replicating that. And that's sort of like, and Lee has brought this up or tons of people have brought this up. This is a community. Hey, Zwift, if you're listening, the community wants this. If you have DI2 or SRAM, they want to have the buttons mapped to your uh, actual shifters. But that's proprietary connectivity, so, probably to Shimano, and they probably would don't open it up for. Well, people Shimano to... actually, there's a funny because it with Shimano, it is completely proprietary because they locked uh, Carew out okay. of it. Yeah, but as far as the SRAM stuff goes, I'm pretty sure it's open because I mean, it it their app picks it up on Bluetooth. Like if I take my phone up to my garage and yeah. open up Bluetooth, it's like access shifters. There they are. Like it just yeah. sends out a Bluetooth signal. So, I mean, that would be ideal with the shifting. Yeah. The only thing is it, it would cut into their sales of hardware. Oh so yeah. That's why, that's why it's like, yeah, that's the sort of thing. It's, they're not will like even the Eric Min interview, uh, uh, with, uh, Raymaker or DC Raymaker. Right. He was saying, oh yeah, we have potential to open this up. That was such a like ambiguous statement which is open it up for trainer, not software. I believe that they're potentially yep. opening this up like, hey, this look like Casey said weeks ago, I don't know how many shows ago, but the uh, the goal is to have, oh yeah, a little bit more openness, but I'm not for, I understand why they're not doing all the full, fully open to everything. Everything works with everything. I just want a better button. If you're gonna go with this, if this is gonna be my thing, 
when I race on Zwift, I use this. Give me a better button. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm leaving a cassette on my bike now. When I when I ride Zwift, I yeah. strap on the plays. When I don't, I take it off and I shift and yeah. That's same here. Well, I've been no using system and I've been I've been enjoying well, I've been doing my training with your system. Double dipping. All right, we're gonna go into double dipping. This is the question for the end of the All we're right. gonna go into this. So Any more, anything more on this or what's up? Good? We good? I, I yeah. got one topic after double dipping. Okay. Short. Short double dipping. Let's go. So the whole double dipping for anyone that doesn't know, like it started back when I was beta testing in Nivello when it was closed. And then I just continued doing it. But now that Zwift takes all your rides, I could just go ride my, my whoosh, whoosh. My whoosh. And then hop on here. So now I'm double dipping. I'm giving both platforms my data. Like, you know what I mean? There is no hiding. The two platforms that I'm riding, every single ride I do, my data is on there. So from the back end, it's like I'm not riding my whoosh Monday through Friday and then racing Saturday and Sunday and only setting, you know what I mean? Only doing the effort. So that's the hell of a way to sandbag. Like I was almost, you could almost get down to C group from where I am now just by sitting in a race and doing okay. enough to but get to win. Let's clarify what double dipping is for the people that don't know. You sound like a drug yeah. addict. Yeah. You're like, totally, yeah. I started. I started. Yeah. I can stop anytime I want. I totally I not yeah, to stop. That's it. That's it. <laughs> is this your intervention? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> for, for those that don't know, double dipping, right? So there's multiple signals coming out of your devices. So like there's Ant Plus, Bluetooth, and now there's Direct Connect. So we have like three and Wi- well, Wi-Fi is Direct Connect. So that's, that's technically four. There's Hardline and Wireless of Direct Connect. You can connect multiple th- one thing, one device to multiple pieces of software or hardware. Like I, most of the verified racing is you have to have a head meter. You have to have a power meter that's going to a secondary device to record, which a lot of people is a head unit. Uh, but when you're like Brian White, Marblehead here, you want to double dip because you want to not miss out on any XP because XP is such a hot topic. There's like a, you know, like forum, forum posts, for days about XP and Zwift, you can go, hey, I'm gonna run my power meter to IndieVelo and, or my whoosh, and that power meter also sends Ant Plus or Bluetooth, and I'm gonna send that to, to Zwift, and you're so double dipping, right? It's, I'm even doing the kicker itself, a direct connect yeah, to Yeah, so Zwift. that's the thing, is like you have a power meter, that's on your bike, you have a, yeah. you have a smart thing, that's, you know, that's two devices, and those can be double dipping, right? You can, yeah. have, you, I've done, quad things going to like yeah. test multiple different re- like the, the the delay remember when i did the i've done delay tests in my whoosh and zwift and indievelo and even rgt but the ethics between that like hey i'm testing stuff and hey i'm i don't want to miss out on my xp from zwift but i want to ride an indievelo and do an indievelo ride or i wanted to do an rgt ride or i wanted to do a my whoosh event I'll run this in the background. Is that fair? That's the question for you guys and the audience. And uh, like, like when I upload to Strava, like I do only do one. So like uh, all that just goes to, you know, so that that's my perspective. Like, you know, I'm putting everything I do into Zwift in my whoosh right now. So there it's- is no question of, there's no, no, it's good. Is, it's good to there's go. no benefit to being a high level in Zwift anymore. So yeah. it's not like if you were double yeah. dipping riding an indie velo and you got the super sweet bike because yeah. you but you, it doesn't really matter what level you are. So who yeah, cares? but would you so would you double dip if you weren't testing it? Would you double dip something that no, didn't have XP? I wouldn't do that after because this is too much work. Yeah. <laughs> So like you're only double dipping I'd be like, the, yeah. Firing like Indie up Bello, your Indie Bello and RGT, would you double dip? No, I just There's ride no one or the other. I used yeah, to double no dip for for science. I think Brian does a little it's bit all, of that yeah, too. Yeah, science I can understand. But for Brian, like, you know, new platform comes out, I'm still riding Zwift, but I put the new yeah. platform off to the <clears> side <throat> to see if, you know, relative <laughs> speeds seem reasonable, how things look, yes. you know, that kind of thing. I don't That's think it's unfair. I, I don't think it's unfair or cheating or no, I don't, I'm pleasy joking. or anything I'm like joking. that. But I'm um, the reason why I'm 85 and there's people that are that have ridden less than I have and they're yeah. higher level than I am is because I spent a year, maybe year and a half riding only an RGT. 
I spent a lot of times riding only an RGT and I never had Zwift run in the background. I just didn't care because like I said, this is last week when we had the big long thing about XP is after level 42 and you can't, you don't need to buy a wheel. Like you get the disc wheels. That's the only the last time you need it. What's the point? But since it's a big thing and you know, Zwift had a big conversation about it, people were pissed off about it. I'm just giving I them a hard time. I want to see double dipping in races. I want you to race an indie fellow and Zwift at the exact same time. And tactically you try you to could, make it work. Oh, that would be awesome. If you could win both, then you would get oh. like double win. <laughs> That's double so dip. Everyone has to double dip. Your race like you score said, goes up race. On both everyone has to. And so like, oh, that oh man. so awesome. Do you realize how hard that would okay. be to pay attention? Let's someone try to goes, do it. Someone goes it. for a break in Indy Bellows and he tried to... Brian White Memorial uh invitation memorial, i'm not dead Jeez. yeah but maybe you maybe it's a tribute or something yeah, we'll start the memorial when you're re- <laughs> dead and gone Someone oh, in the race. goes for an attack and you try to cover the attack but it screws up your zwift race oh, oh so funny that would be funny that would be and so you can't hard. if you win, it's like pi gal you have to win both to actually win so there'd be like no yeah. winners it'd be all push oh. it'd be like <laughs> I'm all in for this. I want to see this. Yeah. This is yeah. Let's do this. Let's do the uh, the spin cast cycling show, double dipping uh, inaugural <laughs> inaugural double dipping race. Two races oh at gosh. once. Right. I'm in. All right, Casey. I'm what's in. your what's your thing? What's oh. your last? Thing I'm you actually surprised you guys didn't have this on your list. This was more for you guys, like the redemption. I mean, every one of you guys called BS last week, right? Oh, on Swift numbers. Yes. Yeah, oh absolute yes bs and oh they, yes oh okay totally they, forgot. They printed, yeah, you're right they you're right, PC's Monday, right. That's, why you're, that's why you're on the show they're complete bs numbers oh, God, we 10%. spent so much time on it too yeah yeah we spent a whole Levels. we used the whole show on their bs numbers yeah so let's go back to it what was right. it like so bring swift that up published, bring that up lee yeah swift put numbers out there of no, well, it was Zwift an interview. Cast. We got it was Zwift, the Zwift cast had interview, and Simon asked the guy from Zwift, yeah, uh, what are the numbers for subscriptions or of the, well, no, Simon levels went no. back, yeah. But Simon went back like internal to Zwift and like, hey guys, give me these numbers. And yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. like dug them yeah, up. He did and his due diligence. He did his due diligence. But it was something like forty five percent of all Zwifters were levels one through ten, and yeah. they're all like that. No way. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so this is the real numbers. This feels right. Absolutely yeah. feels right. right. Read them, read them off, so Casey. Casey, Casey, read them off. Read them off. So okay, that, levels that, that. one through ten, we have ten percent. Levels eleven through twenty, we have fourteen percent of all eligible what, engaged. Engaged Swifters. Swifters. They, yeah, they, yeah, they, they don't even define engaged Swifters. Yeah, is, they said. They, uh, they, they did, but it's like people that ride once a week or something like that. They're reading it here, and they just said they're calling them paying Swifters subscribers yeah. and actively writing on the platform yeah so i don't know what they consider actively but um what 19 percent of levels 21 through 30 31 through 60 is 47 percent, almost half and then 61 through 100 is 10 percent of that th- feels th- th- much this, better this seems right to yeah, me. that seems that seems better yeah but and, and, and there's, a little foot, there's a footnote too there it says with provided another stat only 0.06 which is what's the number they had yeah, uh, that was level 100. That was right. Well, it's like, how could a Zwift sponsored podcast get internal Zwift numbers that were so, so wrong? So far wrong. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. I think it just yeah. shows you a little bit of the disconnection or disjointedness yeah. of Zwift at so the moment. As, it was like as 40, ZMS forty five percent says. Yeah. So these are the revised made up numbers. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> right. right. Well, but so the, the 45% through one, so re- levels one through 10. So the guy's comment on the, on the Zwiftcast uh, show was Zwift is very, or XP is very important to people. That's an accurate statement now with these numbers. Mm-hmm. Before it was like, oh, because remember I was bringing up that point where it's like, how can one through 10, 45% of one through 10 make xp an important thing and my whole thing was like well they obviously make us think that xp is important when not that many people are into it but this number these numbers make sense now it's well, like oh yeah 47 percent, which is 30 to 60 which used to be the old cap yeah. and it's summertime so the 60 the 60 to 100 bump 
was sort of like on the tail end of the end of the indoor season going into spring, correct? If I have my timeline correct. Or was that in December? Uh, it was it was in last fall. So if you were okay. actively riding Zwift, you should have gotten level 60. A, above or, level 60. Okay. But 47% is almost half are 30 to 31. Level 31 to, th- or excuse me, level 31 to 60 is 47%. That sounds a lot more like, hey, we ride a lot and we got the cap, but we're not really pushing it past that because it's sort of like, this is the sweet spot. I think more time will give us that percentage will change on the the 60 to 61 to 100, right? With more time, you'd think. Yeah, everybody's going to naturally rise, right? As long as they're engaged swifters, right? They're going to raise. So like if Swift was to produce these numbers on a monthly basis, they actually probably would want 47% of the people to be in one to 10, because that shows growth within new Yeah. But I mean, if these numbers, like, so if they came out with like a weekly report, you'd want to see the bottom numbers totally high because then they're getting new users. But if they come out like once a year with this and most people are stuck in that middle level, it doesn't really show you know, growth. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we kind of like with the numbers that Zwift themselves give out about participation in uh, Zwift, uh, Zwift, Zwift racing league, the WTRL time trials and uh, what was it? Zwift games and uh, Zwift Academy. Zwift Academy had the largest participation and yeah. it was like unique riders did a, Zwift Academy event, whether it was a workout or a, a ride. And it was still like 110 ish thousand. I might be off a little bit there, but it was just over a hundred thousand people. So that's the largest participation in an event we've seen 80,000 for Zwift games. And Eric Min said 350,000. So we know they've got things, you know, their wires crossed with the numbers. So I you wonder know, if, what if, has changed at Zwift though, because I, I just pulled up the numbers here. Right now, there's twenty, you know, two thousand two hundred and twenty-seven people active on Zwift, yeah. and the events are absolutely ghost towns. Like there's oh, yeah. nobody in no. the events this no. time of day. So it's like back in the day, we had eight hundred or a thousand active users, and, and people were on there getting engaged with other people and doing races and. Is this the is the pacer bots taken away yes. from the community stuff? I think or so. like where's everybody riding? They're not in the I, I think it's the pacer bots. I think we're those things are always now, packed at the at the C and D level. They're yeah, always I think packed. we're at the point now where Aunt Bev has learned about Zwift and she's just riding. Whereas like before, those eight hundred people were like, dude, this is awesome. I'm gonna go get a race in. So those eight hundred people originally that we had before COVID. Those are people that engage and I want to push myself. Now you've got Aunt Bev riding around. So that's my perspective. And I, I, yeah. I think COVID also kind of, because that people were stuck indoors, the majority of the world. So now that it's opened up, they've had that in the summer where they were stuck inside. So now it's like, well, it's nice out. I want to get right outside. So I think that mentality also kind of it is an effect. And there's also, I don't know how much user base is on Indie Velo or uh, My Woosh, but those are gaining popularity. So maybe some of the people have left to one to those, but I think a big part is back, say 2020 and before, there's 800 people on at this time of night, they'd be looking for a, an event, a race to do, yeah. instead of just chilling with the pace partners well, like Aunt Bev and does. I think, I think you may be right, because I'm looking at the, with the crit that starts in eight minutes. It actually has 30 people registered, but the top two categories only have four people in them. Yeah, that's There's I wanted so I, many people that register that don't show up. Yeah, I've been I in so many events up. where it's like 700 people, and I'm like, why is there 40 in the pen? But, but I just wanted to say, I'm going to submit a petition to Marble that for science is renamed Aunt Bev. Yeah, <laughs> I'm into that. Okay. Yeah, into, that. <laughs> into that. So I wanted to bring this up during the race score conversation, but the... The season D racing is always packed. Yeah. They're always packed. So that top tier stuff is not as intriguing. 
because there's a lot of people I think one, it's the ant bev sort of like, Hey, I want to ride with a pace partner because those are people. It's a people that like, Hey, I'll just pop in and there's people there. And I can, I can just, even though I'm not interacting with anyone, I'm not doing ride ons. I'm not doing anything. It's just that mindset of there's people there. Yeah. The, Hey, I don't want to get my head smashed in, in a B C or B A race. That's why those lower end things, because there's people that just want this sort of like shared experience. The Zwift Academy thing, I think that's the most popular event because it falls in the right time when people are like, Hey, I'm coming back inside. Oh, I haven't been on the bike inside in a while. I'm going to, I'll just ramp up my training or to get in ready to go for get me through the holidays or whatever it is. They'll do the Swift Academy thing. And there's still the maybe, Oh, maybe I can be a pro, even though that doesn't really exist anymore. That's why it's kind of like that low hanging fruit event where Zwift is sort of drowning out their community events or club events because they have so many of their own stuff. And now it's a, what is it? What I brought this up a couple of weeks ago, maybe the, uh, uh, man, it's, I can't think of the term. It's the sort of like, uh, spoiled, like you're, uh, you're, you're spoiled from your own, uh, popularity right so like the zwift run events because the, the the zwift labs the zwift labs is not drawing people in it's the zwift specific like uh monthly, uh, mission, racing, the series. monthly racing series or the hey this is the tour of the uh tour of de france uh femme thing yeah. or the uh tour of watopia tour of uh zwift those are starting to drown out the other, the, like the three R's, the, the things that the community stuff. Uh, so maybe the race score will help the community stuff when they start to be involved where you can do this more and more. Like you can have the race scoring, uh, uh, what is it? A choice. Like when you're doing your own, uh, I don't even know if you can do They kind of say, he kind of said that, Hey, we want our community to run our own events, run their own events. If you yeah. can do race scoring events, instead of the category events, it might draw more people in because the, the sandbagging stuff that you guys have, that you guys talked about, like, Hey, this is a better thing that we have now. Maybe that will help with participation in events or ra- yeah, casual possible. racing. And the race score, you're talking about the C and D the race score. They changed it to like, you're sitting 580 to a thousand, 650 to a thousand because I think like I spent some time going through the Zwift labs club chat thing, which is, but uh, everyone, I shouldn't say everyone, the most noise makers in that are in that. I want to say 400 or lower area. They were like, this is, I can't do this. Well, then after a few weeks of that or whatever the time period, they changed the categories because I think our little bubble of, the higher upper racing, you know, like the B's and A's that like in my mind, that's all I do. I think that it is definitely the minority. And I think those lower categories are a big, big user base of Zwift. And they may be the most noisy too. And that's what they, they got the yeah, categories adjusting. They are. they are the most noisy because people in those races, there's like 50, 60 people. They all want to win yeah. and they all don't, they all like, Oh, you're cheating or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> it, it, it's not that way. I think like, you've got a couple things this time of year too going on. Is I think the upper category people are are more likely to be outside and mm-hmm. rotating seasonal a little more than maybe some of the lower categories. And then I, I'm afraid a little bit on this racing score stuff. I think Swift gets a little too balled up in the numbers sometimes. So I'm afraid they're trying to look at like race signups and say, okay, like this race I just looked at it has 30 people in it. How do I even, where would I break the race score numbers to evenly divide these 30 people into five categories? And all of a sudden, because there's not a lot of people in that upper end, that upper end gets very wide and those lower categories get very narrow. Right. And, and I think you're right. It's because some of that, that noise is coming out of those lower categories. So they're getting in the lower categories. There's a nice finite break in those categories and then cat one is you know 575 plus and it's like 
holy cow, you just lumped a huge, a huge chunk of people in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. That it? I just have a quick question. Zwift announced that more community members or notable people within the community were going to get check marks. I don't know if Barney's still in chat, but does Barney have a check mark? Because as far as like our community, I believe he's probably the most famous, you know. Yeah, he should with all the stuff person. he competed in. And I was just curious I got the email, who has a check mark. I got the email, but if they if they already gave him out, I didn't get one because I. I think it's garbage. Yesterday. I think it's terrible. Worst decision ever. <laughs> He, yeah, in, in Casey's <laughs> point's legit. He's told me before. Yeah. Like Casey's yeah. point okay, is so legit. Here's the story. This is my my check and, mark. With and I, I say drop. that, and, and I say that just joking. I, I I'm fine with them doing that. But at one point in time, back when they started elite level invitation only racing, Zwift was inviting Continental Pro teams to come race, and they put together the Zwift All Stars, which. You know, a friend of mine got to recruit one member from each of the big Zwift teams to form this Zwift all-star team. It was me, Kim Little, Lionel Lugison. Like, I got to race with these guys. I got selected to do all that. And one of the guys at Zwift was like, we're going to give the Zwift all-star. We all had to be Zada approved. We had to jump through all these hoops, right? And we were representing Zwift in these races, right? It was it was us against Continental Pro teams. Um and and the guy at Zwift that kind of put it together went through one day and gave us all a check mark. And within about a week, other elite racers in the community threw a stink about it that weren't part of the Zwift All Stars because they didn't have check marks and we did. And some of those guys had like pro mountain bike licenses or something like that. So they were upset about that. Um, and then all of a sudden Zwift Zwift took I had a check mark for a week. Zwift took it away. They said they changed the rule and said you can't have a check mark unless you hold a pro license in an outdoor discipline. And my rant at the time was, so you're saying I can never be as good as an outdoor racer just on your platform. I can never be deserving of that check mark if I don't race outdoors. And that was my argument. Um, I mean, it fell on deaf ears. But at the time, I was like, so you're acknowledging that this is never going to be the same as outdoor. And now I'm glad they've changed their tune on that. Don't get me wrong, but I just kind of laugh about that because they yeah. responded to just, you know, negative noise in the community where it was. So like they actually us, did listen to the community back then. They did <laughs> listen to the community. Well, see, because now the check mark is like I said, it's for notable community members. You don't even have to do anything yeah. really in Zwift. Like don't get drop racing. Eric, he got a check mark because he produces a crap ton of sort of YouTube you know, videos that are based from Zwift. And well, so he's, it, you know, considered a notable member of, you know, the community. Yeah. Zwift can give trust think, marks to whoever they want to give check marks to. Yeah, I have and all four different jerseys and stuff. Like I would love to see like if not a check mark for a pro, but like the pros have like the jersey because the they're a verified pro. And there's a couple different things. And a lot of people may not realize this. And and a lot of people call them the same things. But if you look in game, there is a check mark. And then there's like the orange jersey that often yeah. like a Zwift employee will have. Um, those are two different things. And when Zwift described them way back in the day, it was the check mark is a cyclist, period. Like they are a legit established cyclist where the orange jersey was a notable member of some sort. There were Zwift employees, they were famous people, like. Dale Earnhardt Jr. may have an orange jersey, right? You know, Tony Tony Kanan, um, Tony Kanan, right? He's going to have I, an orange jersey, right? I actually, they're Jimmy not Johnson, cycling. Yes, yeah, like the the NASCAR guy, because I saw the, the jersey, the or check mark, whichever it was, and I chased him. Like the, uh, yeah, Epic. Mike Tomlin. Oh wait, no. yeah. Oh, Dale Jack, Jr. Yeah. actually talked to me in chat one day on on. Oh, on that's Twitter. awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. We share a birthday, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm a fanboy or anything. But no, so I think like you're saying that like the big community members that they recognize like that should be getting that orange jersey, not the check mark. Like there should be a difference there. Yeah. Yeah. Like I yeah. said this last week about the it should be like a gold check mark for the people that competed in the Zwift games. Like if they want to do track. this, where it was like, hey, you competed in the Zwift or, games. Oh, where'd you get the gold thing? Oh, I did the Zwift games. Oh, you should do the Zwift game. You should compete. That's the sort of thing. It's like 
these are little talking points sometimes in the rides. Like somebody walks, somebody rides around with a national championship jersey. You know, like Scott Cunningham would be like, hey, where'd you get that jersey? Oh, I did right. the national. And it helps promote. But I think it should be jerseys, hats, right? Like yeah. my all-star jersey, right, draws attention. And I like wearing it. It's kind of fun. Like I get to mess around with it because I still have the all-star jersey. You can't get that jersey without Swift unlocking it. There's no I've promo tried. code. Yeah. They, yeah. It, it, it's not public obtainable. You have to know somebody who flips yeah. the switch to get that. Um, but that I think that's what they should be, right? Is like agreed. They should get a fancy gold jersey, a fancy hat, right? Something um, that or that they whatever stand whatever out. Zwift wants to do, which is what they're doing now, which is totally cool. Yeah. But I, I think the jersey, like the awarded a jersey in the game for competing in something, <laughs> like like the national championship jersey for national champions, that's good. But a lot of times those jerseys don't really trans. Uh, what is it uh, come across for the average people to kind of see it? Yeah. That's why I like having it in the, in the writer list. Cause the writer list is a little That's bit cool. more important. Yeah. That would be sort of like in addition to it, having it in game, which mm-hmm. would be good for talking points and right. community stuff. The, Hey, we listen to the community now. Well, let the community speak for you as well. Sometimes. Does my, Inside whoosh, the game. does my whoosh give you guys any special indication free riding anything that you're a you know performance verified rider uh no i think in the events like say if i just do like a random wednesday night crit or whatever it is i am almost positive when you look at the results everyone is cat one and then if i'm verified it'll say cat four two or three now if you're cat one you know you're not going to tell a difference but you'll be at the front of the pack so you'll know then but yeah that's the only you can't tell in game it's just if you do an event and there's results it'll list me as cat four or cat three cat two whichever you fall in i'd love to see a little star like yeah if you're in a race next to their name or something just to be like oh if i jump into the otr veterans race and i see that little star on the guy that's holding six oh you know 10 seconds up the road i'm gonna feel a little better about that i I agree with that yeah yeah, yeah like, you wouldn't be I, so inclined. Oh, he's cheating. Let's go check his right, heart rate. Right, right. It's more of like, I want to go check his heart rate to see how good he is or right, how good I'm, they are. <laughs> yeah. You know? So that was good. Okay. Interesting. All right. Any questions from the uh, peanut gallery? <laughs> or are they just, they're all done? Uh, they they were pretty active. Like we, it's been busy. Like, I haven't, all right, I good. can't keep yeah. up. I just tune them out. The best thing you can do is ignore <laughs> chat. Yeah. Give it all to yeah. Lee. Lee. Devil uh, dip devil dipping is my thing. Ignoring chat's your thing. Oh yes. And menu streaming. <laughs> menu streaming. That we have System a is great for menu streaming. I did my 4DP, what is it, half Monty thing. And it was just a black screen with like Oh yeah. Yeah. Which is good. I like that. Like there's moments where it's yeah. like I really like systems HUD. I like the uh uh telling you what zone you should be like if you're doing a workout right it's more of a workout platform but i've already spoken about that so anything else that's about it play the music casey thanks again you're always welcome appreciate it yeah thanks for having me yeah you bring that bring that spice at the end i like it all right everybody that's it lee good night night, everyone thanks for hanging out